to create a memory book, the best thing I would recommend that you do is if you've got the CD or USB key, print off the instructions. If you're going for the kits, they will also come with instructions. So with the actual instruction sheet, you can put it to one side or you can watch this video and pause me as we go along. Now, we're going to start off with a memory book. Now, the memory book to me is just so much fun to create. Now, I'm just going to show you how to create this memory book. Now, remember, book binding has been around a very long time. I am going to show you how I've taken what I've learned over the last few years and I've put my own twist on it. As a crafter, you know, I love learning new techniques and bookbinding is now my new favourite. Now, when it comes to bookbinding, there, I should say, making a memory book, there's five steps. And on the instructions, it tells you all of them. There is creating signatures, and I'm going to explain what a signature is in a second. And then you've got punching holes. Then it's showing you how to sew the signature together and create a cover and put it all together. Now, it may sound difficult, but trust me, as a crafter who I, I don't know if I dare tell you how many years I've been crafting, now let me have a look. 20 years, let's just say 20 years for now. Um, but over the last 20 years, I have got loads of ideas and done loads of different crafting and bookbinding to me, because it helped me through a difficult part when I lost my mum, it's now my new favourite. I love making cards. However, I can take all I've learned on making cards and put it into creating these fabulous books. And I love lists. I am a list person. So let's start with bookbinding. So when it comes to your memory books, okay, you need to create a signature. Now this create this is the same concept, everybody, for if you are doing a journal or if you're doing any of the recipe books, it's the same idea. Once you get one technique done on making memory books, you can create all the different elements. Now, the one thing I want to explain to you, I've printed off using the USB key. Now you can print them off directly from the website by going into the Create and Cherish range or you can get the USB key. We do have kits available, but they don't on, they're not at the moment on all themes. Now, when it comes to print it off, you have to remember that some computers will leave a white edge. Now you can leave that on, that's no problem. Or you may have uh, printers that will print directly to the edge, or you can just trim it down. It's entirely up to you. I'm quite happy leaving up on that. Now a signature is the term that is used to describe a group of pages sewn together to make a book. Now normally it'd be four to seven sheets that you fold in half to create a signature. And it also depends on the thickness of your port you printed it off. So I've actually printed off uh, some of these pages on copy paper, but then I've also printed off some of the pages on 120 GSM to make it a little bit thicker as well. Now in the memory book, um, because I don't want it too wide, I'm actually only going to put four pages. Now what you do, is you print off one side, turn it over and print off the other side. And that's how easy it is to actually get your sheets. Now with the sheets themselves, okay, you get a, you get a choice like I showed you on the previous video. You've got a choice of either printing lined or you've got these areas here where you can put photos and you've even got colored pages that you can still put photos. And because this is my memory book. And all I'm doing is get my four sheets like so and then I am taking them together and pinching them. Now I would recommend for your tools for this is use a bone folder. Um, you pinch down like so and then fold it. So make sure it's nice and folded. Now if for some reason it's not exact, what you can do is just, I hold the edge like so and then do that. And then that gives me my signature. So that's how easy the first part is. So I'll just do that again. So you've got four sheets. I've decided which way I want to have them. Fold them in half like so. And that is how easy it is to do the first step, which is step one, create your signature. So what you want to do is, like I said in the instructions for a memory book, I'm you doing five signatures to create my memory book. Stage two is about punching holes in your signatures. Now remember, on the instructions, you get full instructions on how that is done. And it tells you how to actually work out your measurements with regard to the holes. So let me explain my tools. Now my tools that I'm using on this occasion, it is a piercing mat. And then I am using a piercer. Okay, or some people call it a pokey tool or in 
book binding is a um i always remember it and then i forget it it is called an l a w l now from a crafter's point of view it is not a pricking tool this is a pricking tool and it's very fine so you need to be able to put a hole in so as it goes up it goes thicker so that's the tool that you actually need now the other part that you do need is you need some off cuts of card and it does tell you okay in the instructions to decide you know i start doing it from the left or the right one and a half inches and then do it from each mark so what i've done um, you can do it that way, but there isn't a rule when it comes to actually how many holes you're putting in. I've seen on some where they only put three holes in. On this one, I want it nice and tight because there's going to be loads of photos. So I've actually put six holes in. So from my piece of card, okay, I've just folded it in half. And then what you do is measure your holes. And then you actually, as you can see on this one here, I've got my holes all measured. So remember, all you do, if you wanted to start from the top, okay, you can actually get your ruler, if I just move that out of the way a second, and literally just, you know, it can be an inch or so on, depending on the width of the book. So every one will be different. And these I keep because then I write down on the top what size book it is. So then I don't have to do this all the time. If you fall in love with book binding, which I'm sure you will, this is something that I would recommend that you keep. So this is mine that I've already done. And then to put the holes in, all you do is you get your... Uh, your piercing tool and pierce it onto the mat all the way through so you can see it goes all the way through and you do that all the way along and you put that along the spine so here's one i've already done because this is the book that i'm doing and uh, this is my top tip i mean there's so many different techniques out there uh this is the, one of the techniques that i've learned all i do is get my four sheets which is my signature and what I do is I work out which is the top and which is the bottom. Okay, there we go. And then I put that in there and that sits in the spine. But I like to have make sure it stays in one place. So I just use this little bulldog clip and put it on there. Now you can use paper clips. You can use one at the top and bottom. I just put one at the top like so. And then I get my piercing mat underneath. And then I literally put my holes in like so so it goes all the way through so make sure you go all the way through like so so you press and wiggle and you can see it's going into the spine all the way through now as i said when it comes to book binding when you do your research you can see that there's loads of different way of doing it i found this the easiest way and this is the way that i now do it and what i've done is now along the spine so i'll do another one just to show you how easy it is and this is the second step this is why i'm saying for creating your memory books not just memory books you could this is the same um technique that you do for everything so for creating your diaries or journals or anything this is just so much fun so remember make sure it's nice and flat i'll just put that bulldog clip down and then all I'm doing is lifting it up, making sure it's in the spine. It goes at the spine and it goes through. So just go through them all and I'm pressing them and turning all the way through. So you do that to all five signatures. And that is stage two, everybody. It cannot get any easier. So I have now pierced those two. And then I have got all my five that I've actually gone through there's my five signatures to create my memory book and that is stage two now i'm now going on to the next stage which is all about sewing so this is stage three stage three is to sew your signatures together to create a text block and that is what it's called that you are going to end up with now the tools that you need for this part is your bone folder again then you will need a needle and thread now when i first started i used just an ordinary thread okay and there's nothing wrong with that that is what i've used to create my very first memory book um with my mum m okay and there's nothing wrong with that however as you develop you want stronger thread there is a thread on the market that's called wax thread and it's a little bit thicker you can get different thicknesses for you to use and i and it comes in big rolls like this okay I would, it will take me forever to use all that up 
Uh, and this is the thread that I'm using now. However, to get started, if you want to see if this is for you, I would just recommend using an ordinary um, sewing thread. You can get them in different colours because I like the idea of having different colours inside the book. And you don't actually see it a lot, you know, depending on the colour combinations that you use. Now, when it comes to sewing it, OK, there is a technique. Now, to start off with, I've put them in order of what I want. OK, so I'm just going to put those back. And what I do is just basically fold those down and reinforce those so that you actually make them nice and tight. So do that first, okay, and put them on top of each other. So you're going to see the thicknesses of it. Like so actually, I'm going to put that there and then put it on top. So flatten it down, use your bone folder, and then you're going to put it on top like so. And what you're doing is obviously as you have put those holes in, all the way down the spine and you opened it up it's going to open the fold a little bit more by doing this you creasing it because you want it as tight as possible so this is going to be my book now i have used as i said five signatures now remember signature is what you call or the term it's called of putting sheets together and you can put four to seven sheets but i found four is good now it depends also on the thickness of your paper but there really isn't a right or wrong way it's your own personal now what i'm doing is this is just the thread and i open it up find the middle and with regard to the needle now the needle that I'm using is quite a thick one but I mean I have another couple of needles that I just found in my uh, sewing box. I have to own up that I don't actually sew unless I really have to. I don't think I've sewn a button on for about five years. And so all I'm doing is starting from the outside and going in and literally that is what you're going to do. This is how easy it is. So in and out like so and I find this so easy now you want to leave a little bit of a thread but you don't want to put a knot I'll explain that in a second uh, when you do the second signature so all I'm doing is going like so in and out like that as you go up through all the holes now remember on this particular one I have got six holes and as I said to you in the last section you can create as many holes as you want. I've known, I've done a book that only has three, uh, some I've done four, some I've done five, and this one's six. Now to make sure that once you've actually done the signature and you pull it tight, and you pull it away from each other, that will make it tight. And how you actually get the next signature, so this is where I've stopped, I get my next signature, and then to join them together is so easy, everybody. All you do is just continue simple as that so i'm now continuing like so i'm just going in and out like that all the way through my signatures now remember it's entirely up to you how big you do your signatures now it will move across move about okay until you've joined it together and don't worry too much about that whoops goes this way and then what's going to happen on here Okay, you are going to put it into the last one, like that. So, so far, I've sewn those, so you can see where that's joined onto there, like so. And then this one's here, remember to pull it away from you, and it is moving, because now what you're going to do is put a knot, a double knot, and join those together. So, that's how easy it is to join these two together. And then I'll show you how to do the rest. So do a little double knot like so. Now this, everybody, is stage three. Whoops, make sure I tie it the right way. There we go. Nice and tight. Now you then, I'm on this side, so I get my next signature. And do exactly the same. And what I'm going to do is just thread that into there whoops I just need to make sure I'm doing it the right way look everybody this is why they need to stay together and just thread all the way through typical they've all split apart there we go so thread them all through okay until you have got 
to the end. I'm going to quickly show you because this is where you learn a different stitch. So these are straightforward because you're going in and out all the way down like so. And remember to keep pulling it tight as you go, pulling it away so it's nice and tight. And now what you're going to learn on the next step, okay, now what I've realised as I'm just doing that one is about this point, what I do is I put pieces of ribbon in. Now you may ask why am I putting pieces of ribbon in? The reason being is it pulls them tight when you get to do it. Now all I'm doing is I there's no rule of what colour or how big. I tend to put bigger pieces of ribbon in and then I trim them down. Because what you're going to do is it's going to enable you to tighten them. I should have actually put it on the second one, but I got carried away. So just very quickly thread them through and this helps you tighten them. Okay, so you're going to put one there and then you're going to do the same with the other side. And what, what will happen is when it comes to gluing, it will be nice and glued, nice and tight, and it will bring the spine together. Now this is all in the instructions, everybody. However, I should have started on the second signature, but never mind. Better late than never. Now remember, straightforward once you've done that through, and then you come to here. Now, what I'm going to do now is show you a new stitch. It's called kettle stitch. And I had to learn this as well. So the kettle stitch itself, okay, is what keeps these together. And what you're going to do, if I do it this way, so can you see how this will eventually pull the spine together? And that's why it's handy to have the ribbons in. And I do trim them a bit uh, smaller once it's done. Now, how the kettle stitch works, so I've come to here, so I've done this one and this one, and I want to actually join them together. So what I do, make sure it's nice and tight, like I showed you, pull away from it. But to get the kettle stitch, what you're going to do is put it through, okay? You sew, you sew to the end, and then at this point, create a kettle stitch by, uh, into, by going into the previous signature. Can you see that? So I'm going in there and pulling out, like so pushing the needle between the two signatures from inside to out and then bring the needle so it does like a little loop like so and then you bring the needle as I said then bring the needle back up through the loop so back up through the loop like so and it makes a nice tight knot now at the same time you've got this going on but that joins those two together and then we get the next one so just to repeat that again, like so. So you put through the holes like that all the way through. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fast forward this bit, okay? Because I'm sure you've all got the idea of putting in and out your signature until we come to the last one. Right, so just repeat again, through the two signatures and then through the loop. There we go, and pull up. So that's showing you how to create that kettle stitch. And then we're going to fast forward this last one again. Now, if this happens, just thread your needle again, like so, and continue. There we go. So we're just going to fast forward this bit again till I come to the end. Okay, to do it again, through the previous two, loop up tight so when it comes to the end I personally do that a couple of times so then I know that it's got a double knot because this is the end like so 
and then I cut this off. So everybody, that's how easy it is to actually create your, this is called a text block. And then what we're going to do now is now we're going to put it together. Now, what you, can you see these glues? I should say this uh, ribbon here. Now, what you're going to do now is you're going to glue it together. So once you've created this, the idea is to trim this down. So I, this is what I use to pull. So I'm going to use some three in one glue like so. And I am going to create this so it's easier to do. So I put the glue on first. This is why I use the bigger tabs. Now you can use any adhesives. You can use um, you can use PVA glue. You can use this is my the three in one glue that I tend to use. I use the, the two really. And what this is going to do, it's going to stick it in place like so. And then I will trim those off when it's dried. And then you'll do the same with the other side. Make sure it basically puts it nice and tight for you. I'm going to do the other side like so, put a bit of glue like that, nice and tight and do the other one as well. You can use uh, satin, I've just had this these, uh, ribbon line about and then what I do is pull it so you can see it's pulling it nice and tight and then what I tend to do is I have some, um, if you want to you can have you some um, bulldog clips or you can use some clamps and I am going to have this on here like so. Make sure it's nice and tight but not too tight. So I'll put one there and then I put one on there on the other side and I got these at my local DIY store like so. So that does my size, my ribbon does the inside and then what I'm going to do along there is put glue all the way along the spine like so, so it drives. Now you can use PVA glue, you can use 3-in-1 glue, whatever you wish. I just like using this because it actually dries quicker than PVA glue. So I am just going to now put this to one side out the way. Okay, and then here's one. I did earlier so you can see I've then cut it down okay because it's dried so I've cut it down like so okay and it's ready for the next stage which is to create my book cover so are you ready The next stage is to create your book cover. Now book covers can be created in different sizes, obviously depending on the actual size of your notebook. So you can see that I've created some already here. Now the thing to remember about book covers, okay, is the actual glue that you use. Now the reason why I say that is I've got PVA glue and I've also got three in one glue. Now, what's very important about this is how you apply it. And I'll explain to that when we come to it. Now, for doing your book covers, you use your text block. Remember, that's what this is called once you've actually put all your signatures together. So this is now all dried and you can see that the ribbon's all dried and it's pulled it nice and tight. So then you need the measurements for this. So what you've got here, I've got some mount board, okay, and I've already cut one to sew up, but let me explain how I do it. So I then decide how much I want of a lip to show all the way along the edge, okay? And then also you need to measure the spine width as well. So for this particular text block, what I've got here in centimeters, I have trimmed down and you can use a knife and a ruler or you can use your paper trimmer if you are using mount board. And my measurements are 15.5 centimeters. So it's 15.5 centimeters like so. Okay. Or in inches, it is six and one eighth of an inch. And then it's by 22 centimetres for, for anybody who wants it in centimetres. So there's 22 centimetres. Or if you want it in inches, it's eight and two third inches. Like so. Okay. 
so that has given me my two oops it looks like i've cut one smaller let me just oh no I, I need to just trim that bit off sorry everybody so once i've actually got my two um parts like so already cut to scale then it's the inside now remember what i told you you measure the inside of the spine so the inside of the spine is 1.2 centimeters which is 7 sixteenths in inches so what you then do is get your piece of card or mount board i should say so this is 22 it has to be in height because this is for the spine like so and then it was 1.1 centimeters like that so this is actually my inside of the spine so there are my three pieces ready okay everybody now then we're going to talk about papers now remember okay depending on your size of your book okay memory book journal whatever it is will tell you the size of sheet of paper that you want now you can just use an only piece of paper and then then you can put another paper on top so this is my memory book that i created for uh, of my mother uh, of so i've left gaps so i'm going to write in and what i've done is i used a white sheet and then i printed off one of the sheets from the uh create and cherish range and i put it on front however if you want to do something different so for example this is using the lovely lavender a cottage lavender collection what i did is i printed off two sheets and i joined them together you can do that okay and then you can then print off the elements for the inside later it, it really is up to you how you want to decorate it you might have some 12 by 12 you might have some scrapbooking sheets or off cuts and don't forget if you have a large printer so for example on the sheet that i'm going to show you there we go we've printed it off large so you can actually print the designs from the actual collection on this sunflower on this sunflower collection what we did is we printed it off two of these sheets and this is from the create and cherish and we put one on one side and put on the other and then join them down the spine so it's exactly this is actually creating a diary um of sunflowers which is from the create and cherish range so it really comes down to your personal preferences i would recommend you start off with something like this now it might be that you want to do a smaller scale so you can just use a four sheets of paper but it always made up of two sections and the bit in the middle now on the instructions i put everything on there because what you have to realize i like using my um my mat to make sure that sheet's straight but then what i do is i have my ruler on here so i line my ruler up to there like so so i can see where i'm going to stick it now this is what i wanted to talk to you about how you stick it together and what glue you use now i want to show you two because i i tested loads of different ones so i just wanted to show you how you have to be careful some glue will bleed through depending on the glue and how thick you put it and depending on the solvent and what it is in it so you have to be careful with the glue you could cover that by putting a piece of paper on top and the other thing that you have to remember some glue like this one here i put too much pva on i don't know if you can see it and i tried to smooth it out and it went really wrinkly and i ripped it so my top tip okay this is why i use three in one glue and pva glue if you are using pva glue okay what i would recommend you do is this is how i do it um i don't know if anybody out there has um <laughs> this is what it reminds me of now remember i've learned this myself okay this reminds me of scraping the barrel uh, or should say scraping the ball when you're making a cake mixture what i'm going to do is instead of using a paintbrush to put it on i found that i put more in different sections i found doing it this way much easier and it's your own personal preference remember there isn't a wrong or right way but i put this on like so with a little bit of off cut but then can you see i'm i'm stretching it so i'm almost like pulling it and using this as a scraper to literally make sure i have it on even now i've found doing it this way i don't get ripples okay I don't get blemishes 
uh, on my designs and my paper is nice and smooth however it's entirely up to you how you do it remember i've just taught myself from all the different techniques that are out there and this is what i found much easier to you to do so literally scrape the top off like so so it's all even i've got the leftover bits can go out of the way and then what i do is put that down like so make sure my ruler is straight like that and then position it straight there we go so i'm going to do that again very quickly so there it is there and do exactly the same so i'm just going to use a to make sure i don't get any glue on these bits i'm just going to put that on top because this is what you have to be careful with that you don't glue your sheets of paper um together i should say one paper on top of the other so i have an off cut piece of paper and i just literally go through it all now this bit in the middle this is the spine remember now the thing to remember about the spine itself follow the instructions but you do have to leave a gap between the spine and the front and back cover mounts now what i mean by that is you need in center in centimeters and millimeters you need to leave four millimeters in inches it's three sixteenths so i'm just going to put that on there like so and just leave a little gap like that you see how easy that is so i'm going to do then this side now remember it will lift up but then it will go flat because you do need to leave it to go flat so then i'm going to get this bit do exactly the same make sure i take it off because i don't want a thick layer i only want a thin layer and then do this bit now when it comes to gluing it's entirely up to you how your personal preference i would recommend you try different techniques that's what i've done and i found this way is better because you know you could be using fabric you could be using um leather to back your books whatever you want to do so i find it easier just to scrape off the top layer so it's nice got an even cover and then this is exactly the same put that on there so i mean to leave a gap of four millimeters or what did i say it was three sixteenths and then this is it okay now what i would then do everybody i would then leave that to dry however okay i'm going to go on to do the next stage to show you how to do this next bit because you would leave this to dry and then you would put something on top to make it nice and flat but the next step is to actually do your sides so i'm going to just do this one here okay so then what you would do is do your sides turn over your paper now all the instructions are also on the uh, cd and usb key and if you're getting the mini kits are in there let me just move this glue out the way so i don't knock it over like that so now remember okay what you're going to do is you are going to cut corners so you need a pair of scissors on this one as well and then all i'm doing is cutting like so on the four corners i leave a little gap all the way along now remember it all depends on how much paper you start off with so you need to actually make sure you have um 45 degree corner because what you're going to do is i start with these bits first so i'm now going to get that glue again and then use that actually at this stage i tend to have a mix between three and one glue as well so what i'm going to then do is i put this glue on here so i'm using this for quickness there we go because this bit's all going to be decorated inside so i then pull that up and then do the same on the other side like that now you can use any adhesive that you prefer you can actually get book binding glue out there now remember normally i would leave this to dry but i want to show you this technique so then what you're going to do for the corners you're going to go to the point and press down 
okay and then you're going to be able to get some lovely ends tidy i should say lovely edges so when you fold that over it's nice and neat like so so i'm going to do that again on the other side so you can see put that on there let's do that again so what i do is i find the corner and then bring that down like so use your bone folder do that the same like that and then that's going to go over there and it's going to be lovely and neat there we go let's put that on that now obviously this is bowing in the middle it needs to be flat and it needs to be left to dry luckily i did one earlier and here's one that i've done so once it's nice and dry remember to get your bone folder and really go down those lines okay so you'll get this lovely edging to your book and this is now your book cover so we're now going to do the last stage of the book or i should say of the memory book are you ready on the last stage it's all about attaching your text block which is remember what this is called with all your signatures together to your book cover now remember once you've done your book covers okay the book cover should be bigger or should say wider than your text block now what we're going to do so you can do smaller ones but on this occasion we're just going to put this one together so you know how to create this memory book to get started now when it comes to your uh fixing your text block into your book cover you do not put any adhesive along the spine and you can in actual fact if you wanted to put a piece of ribbon there you can stick a ribbon so then there is a ribbon in your book when if you want to do a journal or diary but because i'm doing a memory book i'm not going to do that now for the inside okay you need to choose your end paper now your end paper is the paper that fits in on the end of each of your text blocks and just use an a4 card you can do different color papers it can be absolutely anything and all i'm doing so the tools for this last section of your memory book is your bone folder and also some adhesive i'm using my three in one glue on this occasion because i find i love using three in one glue for this stage it's your own personal preference so i'm pinching that so i am going to get two of these done so these are my end papers so what i tend to do is i tend to fix them onto my text block so you get your three in one or any adhesive that you prefer okay and then what i'm doing is making sure it's round the edges this is what's very important everybody because this is what you need to turn over your book so this is then going in that like so and then what i'm doing is then lining that up like so i'm making sure i'm wiggling it into place making sure it's lined up to the spine and then reinforce it so this is that one done i've already stuck the other one so there's the two already done and then the next stage of it everybody is to stick it into the inside so what i tend to do is i start off with one side and then the other so the trick is not to put any adhesive along there like so some people put an extra piece of um card along there to give it extra security or I should say make it extra the strength along there it's entirely up to you i've just been doing books like so and all i'm now going to do is i'm going to make sure that lines up onto there and make sure it's in the center of where i want to put it and then do exactly the same thing get your adhesive go around the edges okay as i said you can use any adhesive that you want to use whoops and then make sure that is going to sit in the middle so i push it up to the spine like so and press down then i lift up and then i make sure that it's exactly where i want it so that's one side then i do the same with the other side and because i'm three in one clue you have a minute or so maybe 30 seconds 
of wiggle room if it's moved a little bit you can push it down a little bit so i'm going to do the exactly the same thing go around the edges like so there we go Put push up to the spine and press down and then yet again it's automatically stuck make sure you've got it in the right place like so and that everybody is my book already done from start to finish okay let's make sure i get the right way so it opens this way it's been stitched i've shown you how it's stitched it looks amazing okay i can't tell you how much fun it is to create these books now remember i've shown you step by step on how to create um this gorgeous memory book then what you can do like i've done on this one is you can then decorate it now the principle of creating a memory book is exactly the same principle if you want to actually create a journal so this one is a journal exactly the same thing so we printed off we've sewn we've done the book okay or if you're wanting to do a diary now a diary is a little bit different because of putting different calendars in and everything like that and there is a separate video going up on how to create that with book binding once you've done one you are going to get hooked so hopefully you've enjoyed it you've got some inspiration i'm really hoping that you have as much fun as i do and it's a new craft that you can use in conjunction with your card making so have a go and happy crafting Thank you.